So um, it's, a, it's a nice transition from what uh, Bernard has just presented because uh, the work uh, that Bernard has, has presented, we hope to be able to integrate in Open Cloudware. So I will present you now the uh, Open Cloudware uh, Collaborative Research Project uh, together with Thomas who will uh, do the end of the presentation. And so it's a, it's, it's a, it's a project about uh, managing the application lifecycle uh, of complex applications from the building of the application uh, to its provisioning and its operation. Um, so what, it, what is it? It's a collaborative research project. It's a fairly large project involving 18 partners and it's funded uh, by the, uh, the French, uh, French authorities. And so the, the whole idea is to take, it, uh, to take into account distributed enterprise application and to be able to deploy them on any cloud. So what we, uh, what we aim at with this project is to be able to model the distributed application, which can be made of several virtual machines, to assemble them, build them, uh, deploy them and operate them, so that's the platform as a service layer, if you like, on multiple infrastructure, so being uh, infrastructure as a service agnostic. It's a three-year project that started in January, so we've been through um, uh, a lot of design phases and we're starting the uh, implementation now. And uh, so the partners of the project, uh, which are displayed here, are a number of large corporations. I will not go through them in details. A lot of uh, SMEs, uh, some of them being more or less large actually, and uh, quite a few academic partners, so we'll go back to that later. And also OW2 as the uh, dissemination partner for, uh, for open source. So the project's led by France Telecom Orange. And the best way is to explain the project briefly with a use case, so to, to give you a better idea of what we're aiming to do. So the idea is take any of your favorite Java E application, three tier or an Apache uh, PHP MySQL uh, architect, uh, architecture application. So the user will want to deploy that on the cloud. So what does it want to do? Well, the first thing is has to, to log in into uh, the Open Cloudware portal. So we're, as part of the project, we're working on what the portal is. We're working a lot on the different roles that different users may have. As part of the, of the different roles of the users, for us, a user would be a, typically a developer, a project manager. And we also had to take into account the role of the company, if the company has accounts on the various uh, infrastructure as a service uh, clouds on the data centers. So there's a work on role-based access control that's being done there. So once the, uh, once the user is logged in, what the user wants to do is to build its virtual application. So for, for, for doing this, uh, we are developing a, a vApp model, which is based on an extension on OVF. Uh, to be able to describe the different nodes of the virtual application, the relationship with the nodes, also the, the service level agreement uh, that the user would like to express. And this produces, uh, this produces a, a, an XML file which represents the model. Also, we will offer to the user a number of templates. So if the, some, some of the templates will be pre-prepared uh, and pre-used, so typical Java E LAMP applications, but also the user will be able to build his own templates and that will make like a template gallery which can be offered to users to build applications and that's an extensible gallery as well. So once we have the model, uh, then we go to deployment. So to, for, for doing this, we go through a lot of different uh, phases. We start with, of course, building the application. So that's from the developer's point of view. We will plug in with gen, uh, typical build, building tools. Then we have to uh, generate a, uh, a, a service plan, which is the, the different uh, VMs that will, the representation of the different VMs that will need to be created. Uh, then we'll go to the orchestration layer, uh, the pass orchestration layer for deployment, which will itself address to the management of the various infrastructure as a service components to be able to provision the VMs underneath in the appropriate infrastructure as a service. So once this, <clears throat> once this is done, uh, once this is deployed, so typically as, as Jimmy would say, you've deployed your application and you want to know how much it costs. So we, have a, we will have a, a billing component uh, that will 
be able to tell the user your VMs as they are running now empty this is how much they cost now so this is this gives a vague estimate for the user of how much the application will cost at runtime but the user really wants to know how much it will cost when he does real load on the system so we have a uh, with the int integration of uh, cliff which will be the topic of the next presentation just after this one I think uh, we will, uh, the user can express some load, so typically I have so many requests per second, 80% are read requests, 20% are write requests, so it, the user uses Cliff, which is a load injection platform to define its load profile, then the load is injected, and uh, after the test period running for an hour, the user can see how much it costs typically for an hour, given its estimate loads that he can uh, plan in the future. So this is also very good. Also, while the performance test is running, the user can see that the original instance of the application, which had two nodes in the middle tier, happened to ha now have a third node. So that's also another uh, item that we're working on, which is the self-management of the platform. And so given the SLAs, for example, any of the middle tier node may not go beyond 80% of the CPU, then if there is a threshold that, if this threshold has been gone over, then the platform will instantiate a new VM and create a third node. So through, uh, through the monitoring, the user can see that indeed Open Cloudware answers its promises and has created a new node in order to cope with the load. Uh, when the testing is done, the user wants to go to production, so what he does is uh, now he will, pr uh, he will give a public IP which is maybe closer to where its customers are, so imagine the customers are in Brazil, and uh, put some real data in the database and do a bit more, maybe a bit more of testing or just put the, the platform into production and then what he can see is that because the customers are close to, uh, are in Brazil, you will see that the infrastructure as a service will actually migrate some of the virtual machines to a data center which is closer to the customer in order, in this use case, to reduce the latency. So that's another, uh, another SLA that's being, into account, being taken into account at the multi yas layer at this time. And finally, uh, there we're planning an app, uh, a monitoring console, which will probably be based on the work that Bernard just presented, to be able to aggregate all these data. And all the monitoring data that we gather can be presented to the user, the end user, the app platform manager, but also we need all this monitoring data to be able to run all the uh, self-management layer that I mentioned in order to be able to uh, to check the SLAs we need data so that's why monitoring is very important and this is also why we need uh, monitoring that's uh, being able to get data from various sources. Right so that's the that's the use case so in uh, this slide sort of summarizes the scope of the project so the whole idea is uh, is to be able to to start with uh, to, to, to start with a, an application uh, that's being designed uh, then to be able to implement the, implement, uh, the code, then once the, the user's done that, we go through the building phase, uh, all the unit testing, continuous integration, and with the use of templates, we produce the images, which are then packaged and deployed and operated with all the self-management issues on multi yas And this is a cycle in the sense that uh, support of uh, um, sev different versions of the applications will also be taken into account. Uh, and so in terms of the tar of a target, what we are aiming at is a set of components to build an open platform, end-to-end -end platform as a service and uh, application management tool. So it's going to be a platform, but it's made of components and we really want it to be extensible and customizable. So in the scope of the project, we will deal with a number of middleware components that we want to be elastic, but we really want uh, also that if tomorrow you arrive with your sugar CRM, your whichever middleware, name it, to be able to take it into account in the, uh, in the platform and uh, make it so that it will be able to be elastic and deployed as well. And as I said, uh, we're also aiming at a, a number of, uh, if possible, any uh, infrastructure of a, as a service component. 
So in terms of scope, uh, we're reusing a number of affordable and extending a number of affordable to project, which I'll show on the next slide. Uh, this open cloudware is a direct output of the open source cloudware initiative of OW2. Uh, we have strong relationship with compatible one that Jamie presented earlier on. And uh, so we're working at the moment on, especially on SLA, because that's where uh, we're working on uh, at the moment how to integrate the SLA in, OV, in, OV, in our OVF++ model. Uh, even though Compatible One and Open Cloudware have chosen different standards because Compatible One is based on OCCI and Open Cloudware is based on DMTF-CIMI, we're trying to make bridges between the two. And another common point is the platform as a service component of Compatible One, which is JPass, uh, is being extended in Open Cloudware through the same people who actually made JPass. So that's another link there. And there's a few partners that are in both projects as well. We'll reuse a number of other open source projects and uh, any any cloud, in, uh, yes. So at the moment we're, we're targeting both uh, proprietary ones. So we're experimenting with uh, VMware. We're starting to work with Azure. And we're, uh, we've started with uh, OpenStack. But we'll, we'll, depending on the resources, we we'll, can do more. And if because it will be open source, if other people want to contribute on other, yes, it's possible. So in terms of software, as I said, we will extend a number of uh, OW2 software around Java EE, including uh, Joram that you presented this morning, Serge. Uh, also, uh, Jasmine and the Petal ZSB, which will be the topic of presentations today. Uh, the component about security and role-based access control is called OuthForce, and it's uh, mainly edited by Talis today. Cliff and Sirocco will be presented uh, 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 later on as well as Proactive. Entropy will also be presented, which is about VM placement and energy consumption. In terms of portal, we're using EXO, and we use other open source software, and we also use for the building, building the images UForge, which is uh, provided by our, by our uh, partner in the project, UShareSoft. So I'll hand over to Thomas for the next, no, oh, you've got three minutes. Okay, thank you, uh, Alex. Okay, it's just, in fact, the, the latest slides are just um, a recap of what uh, Alex said. In terms of challenges um, to build um, such a platform, um, let's say, to, to handle the, the, the full life cycle of a multi-tier software solution, uh, you, you, you need, uh, there are a lot of data to, um, to be added to such platform, so you need a strong model in place. So there is a huge effort inside this project based on uh, this topic. Then, of course, cloud computing is all about automation. So, uh, in fact, it's self-service and automation. Uh, you can imagine uh, the challenges that, uh, that are uh, inside this project to automate everything that we want to propose. Of course, building multi-tier vApps is, uh, is, is a really great thing. It's not so easy. So uh, as uh, Alex has explained, we have tried to extend uh, OVF um, standard in order to cover our, our needs. Then, uh, of course, uh, one topic that is really, uh, really um, interesting is this uh, autonomic management. Uh, that will help uh, the application to, to have elasticity so that you can, uh, uh, in fact, uh, on the production system, uh, handle this uh, management. Okay, two minutes. <laughs> then uh, one, one good, good thing is this uh, agnosticity in terms of uh, YAS platform. That's one of the key elements of, um, of this project, is to be able to, to address uh, a private, public cloud uh, uh, within the same manner. Of course, we do have some security uh, aspects that are covered by this project around identity, access, and, and how to protect uh, data from the application. Yes, of course, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, and, and, and that's why we are trying, uh, and we have tried since the beginning of the project to discuss with other uh, research projects, such as a Compatible One, uh, in order to, to, to leverage uh, what they've done so far, and to try to go probably further, because we do have three years to do that, uh, in order to, um, uh, to complete our, uh, our mission, okay? 
then that's the conclusion where we are now. We have discussed a lot. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have had six months of, uh, of uh, design phase, but we do have some, some bricks already there. So the green parts are the ones that we have started to implement. Uh, it's a huge project. There are many partners, but we are trying to, uh, uh, to cope with this and to have uh, some strong uh, commitments on, uh, on, on, on our deliveries. So uh, I don't want to enter too much detail on this. I think we are running out of time, and uh, thank you for your time. And, and, and of course, Alex and myself are available uh, to discuss if you have any uh, question, not probably now, but uh, later on during the, the day. Thanks.